One of my favourite things about the Unity engine is the flexibility involved in presenting data to the user in the editor. Unity make it very easy to design tools and windows to help make parts of your project easier to manage or to do entirely new things with. This is something I'm quite fond of, as I like to build quite a lot of editor tools for projects I work on, not only because there's something satisfying about presenting the data from a scriptable object in a more visually pleasing way than, well, this, but also because it's often something that saves me a lot of time in the long run. If I can invest a small amount of time building a tool or system in the editor that's going to make my workflow easier on a project, I'll often try to budget that into my schedule. You might have noticed a theme in the videos on this channel focusing around building flexible systems and how I try to focus on ways we can automate things in our code. Well, that's true even when I'm building tools. Now it's worth mentioning that a lot of what I present on this channel comes from things I've accomplished or created in my own projects. I mean, the first two videos on the channel about localization were more or less pulled directly from my current indie game, as well as things like the UI tweening controller. One of the issues with this, however, is that I've found myself repeating a lot of work, especially when I'm dealing with building custom editors for classes. The way a lot of us build editors to access properties in our scripts probably looks something like this, always defining the types of field to draw and structuring it around different lines of layout code. This gets repetitive really fast, especially if you just want an editor window to draw the default properties for an object or class like it would in the inspector. And in a custom inspector, you've got the privilege of the draw default inspector class, which is great, but it also doesn't allow you to mess around with things between specific fields. What if I want to add a separator between these two properties? Well, I'm going to have to write out the entire inspector myself. Great, that sucks. But it doesn't have to. Hi there, I'm Matt and welcome to Game Dev Guide. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the serialized object and serialized property classes to automatically and easily draw editor windows for our custom classes. So you can pretty much ignore the scene itself here as we're going to mostly be working in the editor rather than anything in the scene, but I just wanted something that looked better than the default skybox and overall greyness, so I picked a nice calming forest scene. I've got a scriptable object here that's holding a list of game data classes. The game data is a serialized class that's full of other various options and settings I want to be able to edit as I'm developing my game. The problem is, there's a list of them here, and as you can see, it's pretty much a nightmare to read and manage. So it's the perfect candidate for an editor. Let's create a new folder called editor, and let's create two new scripts. Game data object custom editor, and game data object editor window. In our game data object editor window script, let's create a static method to open the editor window and it will take a reference to our game data object, which we'll need a bit later. Then in our custom editor script, let's extend from the editor class and give it the attribute as a custom editor for our game data object class. Then let's override the GUI and create a button that opens the editor window. While we're here, Let's also make a script that opens the editor window if our asset is double clicked. At the top here, let's create another class to handle these events. And using a static method and the onOpenAsset attribute, we can read the selection and determine how to handle it. So here, if the object that's selected is a game data object, we'll create an editor window. Otherwise, we'll tell Unity that we didn't handle the open. Now, back in Unity, when we select our object, we can see that we have a button instead of the list. And if we double click it, it now opens an editor window for us. So the next thing we want to do here is display a list of all of our items. And then when one of them is selected, we want to draw the properties of our game data class. Now usually we'd go in here and start building out an editor, but this video is all about automating the editor process. So let's look at how we can do that. We're actually going to write a script that will agnostically draw properties just like the inspector would, without any input from us. So let's create a new class in the editor folder and we'll call it extended editor window. In here, let's extend from the editor window class. Essentially, the Unity editor itself draws all of the properties using serialized objects and serialized properties, which is sort of a wrapper class that Unity can figure out and then draw from. 
So the idea here is that we're going to use our editor window to take a serializable object and draw all of its properties out like it would in the inspector. So let's create a reference to a serialized object and then also a reference to a current property. Then we'll create a class called draw properties. Here, we're going to iterate through everything and draw it out using the editor GUI layout property field method. First, we check if the property is an array item. And if the item is expanded, we'll then loop through the method and draw its properties out. Essentially, due to how Unity stores data, this just acts as a recursive way to draw out the depths of an object. Now, because the for each loop goes through every single property, we use this last prop path check here to stop child properties from being drawn over iteration. So now back in our editor window, let's have this extend from our extended editor window. We'll then also assign our data object as the serialized object to use. And finally, in our on GUI method, we'll assign the current property as the list in our data object using the find property method. And then we'll tell the window to draw that property and its children. Now, if we take a look at our editor window, it's essentially drawing everything as it would have done in the inspector. Brilliant. In fact, one of the major benefits of drawing your editors using serialized properties is that Unity will also draw any of your custom properties automatically. For instance, our localized string drawer here would be quite an annoying property to work with if we're building a custom editor. The editor GUI layout class doesn't contain any way to draw this, so I'd have to either do more work and write another drawer or somehow, or extend the one I've used for the property drawer in the inspector. But thanks to serialized properties, Unity is instead just drawing the field the same way it would in the inspector. So this is a great start. We've managed to handle all this data in a window with one line in our editor script. However, it would still be nice to clean this up a bit. So let's make a button for each of these array elements and then have our tool set the selected property when one of these is pressed. At the top, let's create a string called selected property path and a serialized property called selected property. Now let's write a method called draw sidebar, which will assign a serialized property if a button is selected. Then back in our editor, we'll draw the sidebar and just check if a property is returned. If it is, we'll draw all of its properties like that. Now, if we look back in Unity and open our editor, we have a dynamic viewer for our data asset, which is a little bit nicer to read than how it was in the inspector. Now, you're probably thinking that's great, Matt, but what if I don't want to have everything drawn? I just want individual elements without all of the work. Well, I've got you covered, friend. We can do that too. Let's extend our editor even further so we can just draw individual properties instead. In our editor window script, let's write a new method called draw field. This will take in a property name and either find it relative to the current property path or base it off of the base serialized object path. And in our editor window, Let's replace this method with a new method called draw selected property panel. And then let's set the current property as our selected property. Here we'll write some logic for drawing our panel using the draw field tool we've just created. And we can continue to fill this out however we like. With just a few lines, we've built a much nicer looking editor for our object. And we can easily repeat this for various editor windows across our project simply by extending from our extended editor window class. The final thing we need to do is add an apply method to make sure that any changes we made get stored back onto our serialized object. So let's write that and then add it to our GUI in our editor window. As you can see, with just a few lines, we now have a much cleaner and much more readable way to build editors in Unity. 
And that's about all there is to it. Obviously, this is just scratching the surface of some of the ways you can automate editor properties, but I found myself often just wanting to focus on the layout and function of my editor tools, rather than worrying about how the fields were being drawn or how the data was being handled. So this system lets you do just that. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video and found the guide helpful, be sure to hit the like button and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I was actually planning on building a basic traffic demo for you all this week, but due to some time constraints I've had the past few weeks, I haven't managed to get around to it yet, but that's very much in the pipeline. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to be able to know when that's out and available. Uh, also, feel free to check out some of the other videos on the channel. I'm really pleased with the last video. It was all about building a pseudo isometric camera for a simulation strategy game. There are lots of things covered in it. So if you're looking for something meaty or something about cameras, be sure to watch that if you haven't already, because there's a lot of information there for you. Otherwise, as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time.